Hello, and welcome to this overview of the Thayer Synth plugin. Thayer Synth has been designed to provide easy access to the Hyperion Synth sound library, with an easy-to-use interface with basic editing controls and a performance-focused interface. The user interface is comprised of three main pages and the title bar. The quick start guide document with the diagrams shown in this video is available at wavesequencer.com. Here's a quick summary of the title bar, which you can find in the Quick Start Guide document. At the top left of the title bar is the Wave Sequencer logo, which when clicked will link to the Wave Sequencer web page. To the right of that is the current build version number. The info button opens up the information page. Here you can view the end user license agreement text, the registered user information, and also shown is the detailed build timestamp. At the centre of the top bar is the oscilloscope, master volume control and master level meter. It's best to adjust the volume so that the meter peaks within the yellow segments to avoid distortion. The all notes off button will stop all active MIDI notes. The global on off button can be used to silence the synth audio engine. The registration status area will show an unlock button until the plugin is registered. To unlock, enter your Traction user ID and password in the unlock panel after registering at Traction.com. Unless the plugin is unlocked, the audio will mute every few minutes and saving will be disabled. The CPU audio load graph shows the percentage of used audio processing time. The settings button opens up a user interface preferences panel. You can set the audio quality and multi-threading options here. It's best to leave the multi-threading options at the default setting unless you are experiencing issues. Let's take a look at the main user interface panel. This summary diagram is available in the Quick Start Guide. The main panel shows the currently loaded patch name and navigation buttons. The name and navigation buttons are available in all the UI views. The random patch button is a fun way to try out the sounds. In this view, you can control the macro parameters of each patch. Depending on the patch, there are four, six, or eight control knobs. The waveform visualizer shows the live audio output split between the left and right channels. You can also navigate backwards and forwards through the patch list with the arrow buttons. The virtual keyboard, pitch, and mod wheel respond to MIDI input on MIDI channel one. You can also click on the notes and the virtual pitch and mod wheels to generate MIDI data. The velocity of the generated notes is dependent on the vertical click position. The info button on the main panel shows the image credit for the currently loaded background image. And the waveform button lets you toggle the visibility of the waveform visualizer. Each macro control can be adjusted using mouse input. The macro knobs can also be mapped to MIDI CC controller numbers. Click on the chain icon to set the MIDI CC number. Mouse over the highlighted areas whilst moving the MIDI controller to pick up the CC number automatically. You can also directly enter CC numbers. Double click the number to type in a value. MIDI CC assignments are remembered across all instances of the plugin and restored when loading the plugin. Now let's take a look at the patch browser view. This diagram is also available in the Quick Start Guide. There are many factory patches, so the browser is designed to make it easy to find specific types of sounds. Double click on the patch row to load a patch. The metadata for the patch is shown to the right of the list. You can choose to keep the browser open after loading patches with the Keep Browser Open checkbox. The single combi column shows if a patch is a single layer or a combi, multi-layer patch. Filter by favourites by clicking the heart icon in the filters area. You can mark a patch as a favourite by clicking the heart icon in the row for that patch. You can also reorder the view by clicking on the column titles or by dragging them left and right. 
The folder browser lets you set the Active Directory. This is already set to the Factory Patches location by default. When changing to a different folder, the filters are cleared and the directory scan may take a few moments. The Patch Filter Category buttons are useful to look for specific types of sounds. The Filter Category buttons are dynamic and become darker to show the remaining available category types. You can filter by one instrument type and up to three sound categories at once. In some cases, the list might become empty if no sounds match the filters. The navigation and random patch buttons work within the currently filtered list. The author, collection and name text boxes also let you filter the list by typing directly into them. Finally, we'll cover the Layers Editing view. Again, this diagram is available in the Quick Start Guide. Click the Layers button to open the Layers Edit view. Here you can see each layer that is used in a patch. The layer number is on the left, followed by the Layer MIDI Receive channel. Each layer can be muted or soloed. Hold Shift whilst clicking to do an exclusive mute or inclusive solo. Each layer's volume can be adjusted. There's a mini level meter to the left of the volume slider. Each layer can also be individually transposed up or down by 24 semitones. Keyboard and velocity ranges can be set for each layer directly by dragging the sliders or via the learn function. The number of voices enabled for each layer can be set between 1 and 32 voices. When only one voice is enabled, the mono legato, glide and re-trigger options become effective. Note re-trigger is great for playing fast monophonic lead sounds. The velocity glide factor makes the glide time longer at low velocities and faster with higher velocity. Each layer also features independent up and down bend ranges and bend rates. The random pitch factor and pitch drift parameters can help to introduce some analog feel to sounds. Each layer in a patch also has independent chord, note echo and arpeggiator controls. You can enable or disable the arpeggiator, change the octave range, gate and swing parameters. The arpeggiator rate is linked to the current tempo. There is an offset parameter to make the arpeggiator run slightly slower or faster than the tempo linked speed. The chord list lets you select to play a chord with just one note on the keyboard. The sustain option will latch the arpeggiator whilst the sustain pedal is held down. The latch checkbox will make the arpeggiator run continuously for the last pressed notes. The Once checkbox will make the arpeggiator play the note sequence just once for each held chord. This is great for a fast strum effect. You can select multiple note direction modes. In some combis, some layers may have no notes or arpeggiator controls available. This is because those layers are effects bus 
only layers. This sound already has an echo effects component, but here we're adding MIDI note echo effect just for demonstration purposes. You can enable up to 10 note repeats with the MIDI echo feature. That's it. Thanks for watching, and please check out the Thea sound demo video.